Mr. President-elect, you know that I have never shied away from speaking truth to power. And that will be my charge as Director of National Intelligence. Avril Haines, the Director of National Intelligence, recently said that current classification systems strain intelligence agencies and vast troves of classified info undermine national security. Our own leader of our National Intelligence Services is saying that we overclassify too much and yet we still haven't received any additional information from the three Navy videos released last year. F-18 pilot Ryan Graves, one of the few people to add any additional info to this, I cover my own reaction to his video here. He gave a presentation very interesting, recommend you check that out. Sorry, I have the speed at 1.25. Otherwise, we've received basically nothing. You know, there's a lot of bureaucratic paperwork going on, it seems like, but no actual info released until recently. John Greenwald from the Black Vault has been doing Freedom of Information Act requests for years, and he has recently gotten this back from the US government. So that was the assessment that came out last year, the 25 June assessment. Turns out there was a classified version that went out previous to that, and John Greenwald from the Black Vault was able to get that released, although heavily, heavily redacted. Okay, I think way over redacted. In this video, I go through my additional points, and then I found some very interesting reports in the Range Fowler, Navy Range Fowler report that can lead a lot more information, give us more detail about these sightings. Thanks for being here. Smash that like button if you do like this content. Consider subscribing so you get notifications. I release videos every Friday, 1500 GMT. And if you want to support the channel, go to patreon.com forward slash Chris Slater for additional benefits and access. Now on to the video. John Greenwald is doing an amazing service, doing all these Freedom of Information Act requests. Okay, the, the government is required to give us information. We the people that paid for all the taxes, right? They're required to give us information for things that we've funded, right? Within reason, not to give away certain things, right? And John explains it here. So when they do redact, they explain it. They show it here. A is military plans, weapon systems, or operations. C, intelligence act activities, including covert action, intelligence source and methods, and cryptology. D is foreign relations or foreign activities in the United States, including confidential sources. G, vulnerabilities or capabilities of systems, installations, infrastructures, project plans, or protection services relating to the national security. John does a great job. He shows basically what was in the public report here, and then you can see all the additional new stuff. So he puts in yellow additional new things that they didn't have in the original report. And then black is what is actually redacted. Going over his brief, I got three main points out of it. My first question, and I had it right when I initially opened the redacted report was, why are shapes classified? It just makes absolutely no sense to me. Why would knowing the shape of these things somehow fit in with any of these classification categories? Yeah, I don't know how you can say that a pilot seeing something in the shape of a circle or a square or a balloon how that can possibly be classified. Uh, and does that, is that a vulnerability of our mental ability to identify objects? I don't, just don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. John Greenwald said he's going to go back and re-attack on that for the shapes. And I think without a doubt, I mean, there's no way those should in any way be classified for the shapes. The second thing that really stood out to me when I went through the report and John didn't really mention too much about it. So what really stuck out to me is the line in the report about Massent. So in Appendix D, the Senate report accompanying the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021. The Senate report specifically requested that the report include, okay, so the Senate is requiring detailed analysis of identified phenomena collected by geographic intelligence, SIGINT, signature intelligence, HUMINT, human intelligence, and MASINT, measurement and signature intelligence. So these four were required, right, to at least be reviewed. If we go up to what actually happened, this is what happened. So Appendix A, Collection by Intelligence Discipline, again, heavily redacted, okay. Geospatial Intelligence. The sections below pro provide a brief summary of contributions by intelligence discipline. So geospatial intelligence, this for me, I'm thinking satellite data, right, it's basically what I'm thinking. Images and videos, what we're looking at. Then we have signals intelligence. I'm used to hearing about SIGINT, okay, this is all radar, crazy w radar emissions, anything something is emitting electromagnetically. Okay, that's SIGINT. I'm used to hearing about that. Used to hearing at least human. We didn't we didn't deal with it much. It's more of a CIA related thing. Human intelligence coming from human sources. Don't really know much about it. And that is also redacted. That makes sense to me. Now we get to measurement and signature intelligence, which is Massent. This was new to me until John Ramirez, until I saw his brief, I never heard of Massent, to be honest. Here they say the UAP task force had no Massent reporting on the events 
considered in this data set. No mass in reporting, which is interesting, right? Because it was required. If we look here, it was definitely required by the Senate. So where's the mass in? So I researched into mass in, found this very interesting article from the intelligence community in the 21st century from the House of Representatives 104th Congress. Good job. They talk all about mass in, in here, okay? So I really had to figure out what mass in is. And what I found is pretty interesting. So recognizing the need to ensure proper exploitation of complex technically derived data, the intelligence community classified Masson as a formal intelligence discipline in 1986. To further consolidate Masson management, the central Masson office was established in 1993 by the director of DIA with specific responsibilities detailed by the director of central intelligence and direct department of defense directives. Masson sensors include, but are not limited to, radar, optical, infrared, acoustic, nuclear, radiation detection, spectro road, radiometric and seismic systems, as well as gas, liquid, and solid material sampling systems. So in my view, Massent appears to be exactly what we need <laughs> to actually figure out what these things are, and yet none of it was even considered for the UAP task force, so they didn't have access to it. Despite this definition, many in the intelligence community are confused as to ma what Massent really is. Although Massent can be described as the highly technical exploitation of traditional disciplines, the Massent collection techniques cover areas not addressed by other disciplines. Massent can be considered analogous to the individual who relies on all senses to gain information about his or her environment, where SIGINT is akin to sound and IMINT to sight. Massent is akin to touch, taste, and smell. The areas where Massent expands on the traditional disciplines, image intelligence and signature intelligence can be thought of as providing aids to approve upon or add dimensions and capabilities to the sight and sound senses that would not otherwise be possible. That's an amazing analogy and really runs in line with my whole theory on, that we're inside of larger organisms, right? So in this case, image intelligence is going to be the eyes of the organism, Signature intelligence is going to be more like the ears of the organism. And now what they are saying is massant is akin to touch, taste, and smell. So you're doing more detailed analysis, chemical spectrographical analysis, if you will, to get deeper insight. And that's really what massant is. So that, that was the, the second biggest thing for me was massant was not included in there. And it seems like right along the things we need to actually figure out what these objects are. Okay, third and final thing, and really it goes down to our sensors. I've talked about it before, okay? So if we are fighting with high-speed aircraft, the systems that we're using track in Doppler, track in radio frequency, electromagnetic frequency spectrums. A lot of that is using Doppler, change in speed, okay? I've talked to you before, just like the way your eyes work, okay? If something is still, it's not moving in relation to its background at all, it's very difficult to pick it out of a background. You're, you're picking it out of background clutter that blends together. It's very difficult for us to track helicopters. Okay? If helicopters, they go, they fly slow enough that it's difficult for us as fighters to track them and engage with them. Okay? It's much harder than I think most people would actually think. We have to actually use manual track and not use our systems and just do a manual guns track, right? Luckily, helicopters aren't going really fast, so it's actually pretty easy. As a result, those sensors are not generally suited for identifying UAP, which I believe fits right in here, which can be stationary in high winds. Maybe not, but I would be surprised if it didn't. Because that is so weird for us. I can't describe how weird that is to be stationary in high winds. We, we just don't understand that. Okay, stationary, to me, I'm thinking of some sort of balloon, right? Some lighter than air device or helicopter, right? It's actually using lift uh, to stay in that position. But as soon as you add a, a wind, okay? What that means is the whole medium that we're actually flying in is moving. So to be actually stationary in a 100 knot wind, for instance, you need to be flying 100 knots directly into the wind, like a glider or something. Often helicopters or predators, for instance, our drones, like predators, can't fly that fast. Okay, drones, predators fly maybe 100 knots at the most. They're like Cessna speeds. The winds are 100 knots out of the east. You can't even get there with a predator. You can't even get to that location. That's how much this affects it. What also came out from Freedom of Information Act requests was range fowler sheets. These are the sheets that we actually have to fill out when something interacts our training. So if we go down now to this section and a handful of UAP appear to demonstrate advanced technology. In this section now, we have here, heavily redacted paragraph. So in the second paragraph here, it says, some UAP appear to remain stationary in winds aloft, move against the wind, maneuver abruptly, or move at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion. If we go down to this, this next paragraph, in blank, I'm guessing maybe 2019, a Navy pilot in an F-18 Super Hornet, 
etc. He noted the winds aloft were greater than, I'm gonna guess here in a little bit, and he was fighting to keep his aircraft in the airspace. Blank was blank, and its position was unaffected by the blank. <laughs> the pilot, blank, 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 object was blank, okay? So interesting there, I thought it mirrored very close to this Range Fowler report that I found. This is a Range Fowler reporting form. Okay, we fill these out. They have different ones depending on the bases. If we have to stop training in a certain area, we document why we stopped, what it was, try and figure out how we can stop in the future, etc. Up here, the classification, secret relative to USA 5i, your name, rank, squadron, crew position. Then they have uh, the date here, this one blacked out, and this is day, night, okay? This is normally filled in, it wasn't for this, actual report, but we go to mission description, not an issue. Okay, this is the actual altitude of the contact, right? They hide this, location altitude of the contact was a constant, wind speed was the contact moving, and direction. Okay, so these are actually pretty important for later reports. There's actually 21 reports in this packet here that I was able to find. Other interesting things here is, please check all that apply. I love this section, okay? <laughs> Round, square, balloon-shaped, wings, airframe, other shape, apparent propulsion. We have moving parts, metallic, markings, translucent, opaque, and reflective. So very interesting to me. It feels like that was added later. And I think if we want to guess what shapes they're kind of seeing, I would probably reference this section here. Okay, down below, then they have basically, please describe the event, anything you can in your own words. Again, everything heavily redacted, but in, I would say whiskey 72, because that's basically this form is coming from that base. So it's either in that airspace is my guess, 2019, he was in a F-18 Super Hornet, most likely conducting a flight. He noted the winds aloft were greater than, I'm guessing hundred knots, and he was fighting to keep his aircraft in the airspace. Blank was blank and by the blank, indicated that the object was blank. <laughs> Thanks for that. If we go back to fun with Mad Libs, in blankety blank, again, this is for A and G, so vulnerabilities, a Navy pilot in an F-18 Super Hornet, most likely, saw some sort of object level or something in altitude. He noted the winds aloft were greater than, what am I going to guess here? I'm gonna say 100 knots. And he was fighting to keep his aircraft in the airspace. Again, total guess, the UAP was, I'm gonna guess, at the same altitude and its position was unaffected by the winds. Okay, he noted the winds aloft were greater than, let's say 100 knots, and he was fighting to keep his aircraft in the airspace. If we're fighting in relation to other fighters, right, we're all in the same airspace, so we're all gonna move together with the airspace. If you don't take that into account while you're making your maneuvers, it's going to affect you 100%. It will undoubtedly affect you. I mean, think about it, 120 knots is two miles a minute. You're moving a mile every 30 seconds, faster than most helicopters and they're definitely not getting up to like 20,000 feet and above. So how does it do that? How does it stay in the same location in high winds? This is just so mind blowing to me. Those are the main points I got. Check out that video from John Greenwald on the redacted version. Thanks to John for doing that amazing work. Thanks to Ryan Graves for being one of the few guys out there willing and able to speak up about this stuff. I really don't think that giving out the shape, the speed, the maneuvers of these things is really gonna highlight any vulnerabilities. Okay, if it's not, it shouldn't be a secret that it's hard to track things that are not moving and they're stationary in high wind. If the people we're fighting don't already know that, I'm not concerned about those people, right? We don't have to worry about threats. Coming from other organizations don't understand <laughs> that it's difficult to track objects that are stationary in high wind. The reason is nothing is stationary in high wind. Nothing is stationary. You have to fly against the wind that fast. So our systems are not <laughs> oriented to find those things and track them. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Exciting also this week, if you wanna get our own information, since the government clearly doesn't want to give it to us, we wanna get our own evidence, then come to the website, latofiles.com, sign up to get on our whitelist. We're starting an NFT project to actually populate the globe as much as we can with Sky360 systems and get some actual access into space so we can get our own evidence, put it open source. Please smash that like button. If you did like this content, subscribe, and then go to patreon.com to support the channel. Thanks so much to my patrons. Take back knowledge about our universe. Thanks for being here. Have a great week. Peace.